Hi, welcome to my presentation. I'm Shamim, and this is John work with uh, Nicola Sushinir and Eve Gamade. Uh, this is the outline of my presentation. I'll first explain the problem and uh, our contributions and the mathematical framework and uh, the diversity objective function we propose. And uh, before concluding, I will take you through the experimental results. So first, uh, why we need diversity in recommendation system and what are our contributions. Majority of the recommendation algorithms, they rank the items based on something called probability ranking principles, which assumes that the relevance of an item is independent of the relevance of the other items. But in practice, uh, that's not the case. And the recommendation list, uh, the items becomes similar to each other. And there is an inherent problem due to the selection bias towards the popular items. So we would like to solve this. And diversification is a mean to solve this and increase user satisfaction. And uh, of course, compensates for popularity bias. And uh, state of the art algorithms, uh, diversification algorithms, are based on scalarization principle, where they take two objectives, one corresponding to relevance and the other one corresponding to divers diversity, and linearly combine and uh, explicitly trade off. And what we call our contribution is we propose uh, an objective function, which uh, takes into account both relevance and diversity in a single function. So we don't actually have to explicitly trade off relevance and diversity. And we frame the problem as a user interest coverage problem. And uh, relevance estimation is implicit. So you don't have to run a baseline recommender system to first generate the rating values and then re-rank. And we frame our problem as a submodular maximization problem. And uh, there exists very efficient and simple optimization algorithm to solve submodular maximization problem. So now the mathematical framework, the preliminaries. So we are given a set x of n objects with a similarity measure defined over the set. And we don't assume anything other than the non-negativity of the similarity measure. Uh, we don't assume that it's symmetric or transitive. And we store the similarity values for the items in the set X, in the matrix W. And the pair, X and W, we can view it as a weighted graph where the similarity corresponds to the weight of the edge between the items. Now we, de we, de we define what is uh, point coverage. Given a subset S of X and an item I, which is not in S, we define point coverage of I by the given set S as given here. The function F, we call it a saturation function. And uh, we choose F such a way that the coverage function has a property, diminishing return property. And I will come back to it later. Now we extend the definition of point coverage to profile coverage. Given a set R of M items and a set corresponding set U of utility values for the items for a given user, we define the profile of that user as the pair R and U. And the profile coverage is defined as the linear combination of the point coverage for the items in the set R weighted by the corresponding utility values. The idea behind a point coverage and a profile coverage is to measure how well the set S covers the items here in the set R. So a higher profile coverage value for a set indicates that the set S covers the items in the set R well. And the profile defines a user's interest. And we frame our diversification problem as covering user's interest. So a higher value of profile coverage indicates that the set S covers higher, uh, it, it covers larger spectrum of user's interest. 
Now, in that sense, a set S star will have optimal utility, utility corresponds to relevance here, uh, utility diversity trade-off. A, a set S star will have a optimal utility diversity trade-off if it solves this maximization problem. And we have a cardinality constraint because we are interested only in the top K recommendations. Now, the, this is the objective function. And now we go back to the saturation function, how we choose a proper saturation function. So any trade-off between diversity and relevance is achieved through the saturation function f because coverage is defined over this function f. And if we choose our f in such a way that it's a non-decreasing concave function, then the coverage function becomes a non-decreasing submodular function. And why we would like to have our objective to be submodular function is because submodular function has this property called diminishing return property. So I'll explain what exactly we mean by diminishing return property. So here we have three clusters of items, and this blue circles represents a user profile and a, an ideal diversification algorithm should recommend items covering all these three different clusters. And what's that, that red circle indicates? So what, the, what does uh, diminishing return exactly means is, when you add an item, once you add an item to the set S, then the marginal gain we obtain by adding another item from the same cluster to the set S is less than adding an, adding an item from a different clusters. By enforcing that, we could guarantee that our diversification algorithm recommends item covering all these clusters. Now, how do we solve this? Because submodular maximization problem is a NP-hard problem. But luckily, uh, the greedy heuristic, which is very simple, we, uh, the heuristic simply says that at each iteration, we add the item which corresponds to the, which uh, gives the highest uh, coverage value. And uh, the greedy heuristic, it gives a very good approximation guarantee for in case of uh, monotonic non-decreasing submodular functions. In fact, we get uh, the worst case optimality. It's the worst case optimality. is 63 percentage of the optimal result. Now, so with this greedy algorithm, uh, we show you the experimental results. We, uh, we chose two baselines. One is called mar maximal marginal relevance. Uh, and uh, MMR selects uh, item based on this objective function, where the similarity one is the similarity between a user and I item, and the similarity is two is the similarity between uh, the items. And uh, alpha is the, uh, uh, sorry, lambda is the trade-off parameter. And the second one is uh, max some diversification, where the objective of selecting item is based on this equation where the first part is a modular function and the second part is a distant function. Both these uh, baselines are based on the scalarization principle I explained earlier. It's a, so we have a, we have a trade-off parameter, lambda, where we, for different values of lambda, we get different relevance diversity trade-off. Now the protocol of the experiment, we split the data to train and testing, and used 3% of 3% for testing. And we follow this uh, protocol given in by Kramanosi and others. And uh, our saturation function, we defined it f of t is equal to t raised to gamma for a value between 0 and 1. And it's a concave function. And the cosine similarity is used as a similarity measure. And uh, we run it on two data sets. One is Movie Lens, and the other one is Yahoo Movies. And uh, there is no uh, consensus regarding the diversity metrics. So we measure different aspects of diversity, which covers uh, uh, 
popularity, bias, coverage, etc. And these are our results for MovieLens for uh, uh, 10 recommendations. And you could see that the, the bold uh, means it's uh, statistically significant. And our algorithm is the right one, rightmost one, SDR. And the column corresponds to mode is for uh, modular algorithm, which is the same as the item-based collaborative filtering. And uh, this is a graph for relevance diversity trade-off. You could see that the bold lines, the red and blue bold lines correspond to our algorithm, which dominates the corresponding red and blue dotted lines. And uh, we, uh, this is the results on Yahoo Movies. On Yahoo Movies, we don't see a much bigger improvement. It's only marginal. And we argue that, uh, I mean, this is the graph for the Yahoo Movies data set. And you can see that bold lines are almost the performance is as same as the other ones, the dot lines. And we argue that it's because of uh, the fact that diversity recommendation makes sense only in case of eclectic users. You, for a user who have like, you know, a fixed interest or one interest only, then it doesn't make sense to recommend diverse items. So we have subsampled 109 eclectic users, and this is the result. This is the result on this eclectic users. You could see that uh, we have a uh, much, uh, we have significant results, significantly better results on this eclectic user. And this is the corresponding graph. Here you can see for different values of, for different number of recommendations, we get uh, strong results with our, with our algorithm, which is uh, indicated by the bold lines, blue and uh, red. Uh, the blue corresponds to DCG and the red corresponds to general coverage, which is a coverage metric. And the conclusion, yeah, we propose a single criteria where we don't actually have to explicitly trade off the relevance and diversity parameter. And uh, since we frame our problem as a modular maximization problem, there exist very efficient and uh, easy algorithms. And our experimental results show that uh, our algorithm works stronger compared to the baselines. And uh, thank you. Uh, uh, questions, please. Sorry. So we have a pretty good amount of time for some questions. If people want to get into some technical detail and applications, I see one coming up from the left. Hi, Daniel Kluver, Group Lens Research. At the end, you were using results in increased genre coverage. My question here is, do we know that users want coverage of every genre? Um, would your algorithm be able to learn that some users might not ever want, say, a documentary? Uh, so, sorry, I, I didn't get the question completely. Can you repeat? So, the question is, does your algorithm does your algorithm seek to increase genre coverage or complete coverage, or does it is it able to learn that some users don't want some genres? Some users don't want complete coverage. Yeah, I mean, uh, the algorithm is not designed uh, explicitly, I mean, specifically for a uh, genre coverage. Well, I, I, there, is, there is a paper in IJCI where they uh, suggest an algorithm which is completely based on uh, increasing the genre coverage. But we don't, we don't, exp we don't specifically uh, optimize genre coverage. Genre coverage, uh, we chose genre coverage as one of the metric because uh, there is no proper uh, diversity metric exist. exist. So it, it's just that uh, since we don't find any other metrics, we, we measured like, you know, uh, coverage, uh, popularity stratified recall, relevance and catalog coverage, uh, genre coverage, ILD, intralist distance. And uh, yeah, we covered uh, all these metrics. But it's not just that you know our algorithm uh, optimizes just uh, general coverage. Yes, it uh, we can say that uh, it can it can be used in uh, other cases like you know uh, even if uh, there is no proper genre information and uh, yeah we could recommend items based on like you know especially popularity stratified recall which. Uh, which measures how well the algorithm recommends from the tail distributions. Uh, we can use that and uh, can say that the algorithm 
uh, recommends from the tail distributions, which is one way of telling that it's a diverse list. I wonder, in the, in the beginning, you mentioned that you assume some availability of the pairwise similarity data. Uh, I wonder how how accurate the model would assume those data, or in other way, how bad uh, those data may break your model? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't see who, who is, is the question. Ah, OK. Can you repeat? Oh, sorry. OK, my question is that in the beginning, you mentioned you assume some availability of a pairwise similarity data yeah. as, as an input for your model. I wonder how accurate uh, those data uh, would this model assume, or in other way, how bad those data may be uh, break your model? Yeah, I mean, similarity, that the similarity measure is uh, very critical, uh, because the way we define, it's, uh, it's on a similarity graph. So uh, we assume that the similarity measure is, uh, is uh, very accurate, or at least, you know, a good measure of similarity. I mean, what I mean is that, for example, if you feel you purposely introduce some perturbation on those data, will that change your result dramatically? Or how kind of a robustness your model would uh, uh, have with the impact of uh, no, the did, noise? No, we, we didn't try with uh, any perturbations. But, uh, but the results, uh, I don't know exactly how it's, it's going to behave when we change the when we you know part of the similarity measure but the results what we got is statistically very significant compared to the other three methods so but yeah specifically if you ask like you now if we put up the similarity measure how the algorithm perform is uh, i didn't do it yet at least I mean, so far maybe it's a good thing to do in the future hi um back here Thanks for your talk. Um, you briefly mentioned the fact that there are no metrics available to measure diversity. Yeah. Uh, would you please throw light on how you uh, measured that and you know checked how well your algorithm was doing on that front? Yeah, we measured we measured uh, coverage, and we measured uh, intralist distance, and we measured DCG, uh, which is a relevance, obviously a ranking relevance estimate uh, metric, and. Uh, Precision, these are the five metric we used in our study. And I just uh, given a uh, popularity stratified recall, which measures the uh, popularity bias, I mean, how well the system recommends from the tail distribution. So these are the metrics we used. But I, I just reported only three, because so, you know the space limitation. I don't want to make it really ugly. So, but the, in, the, in the paper, uh, I do have the results for all the other metrics. Uh, we, uh, the idea behind uh, using this metric is metrics are like uh, a diversity uh, recommender system should have all these properties. It should recommend from tail distribution. It should cover a larger spectrum of user interest, like you know by by genre or by catalog or whatever we use. And it should have eye precision, and it should have IDCG values, and the uh, ILD also should have higher value. Thank you. Wonderful. I think we're going to have to cut it off there. Thank you again very much.